Hello everybody, Natalie and I are back today for Color First. Here's the color combination we are working with today. Isn't that beautiful? Super unique and fun, I love it. I'm gonna be creating with a heritage layout today and I have a whole slew of different products, mostly from Heidi Swap's Honey and Spice collection, but I'm also going to play with tons of stamps and I have some bits and pieces from Pink Paisley's Again and Again line as well. So let's get started. The first order of business is to get stamping. I'm using one of my absolute favorite stamp sets from Altenu. This is called Build a Flower Ranunculus. Ranunculus are absolutely one of my very favorite flowers and I love this stamp set. It makes the prettiest flowers and they're nice and big. Quite often you can catch them in Altenu's clearance section or sale section for a really, really great price too. In fact, if I can find them on their website, I'll link them up here. I am stamping using a bunch of different colors. From Catherine Puller, I'm using uh, Merlot, Rose Petal, Coke, Peppermint Scrub, and Cranberry Fizz. And it's going to give me that beautiful, gorgeous, purpley, burgundy red color that is in our color inspiration for today's layout. These stamps do take a bit to line up. They're not per they don't line up perfectly, uh, but that's okay. They're one of the very first stamp sets that Altenute came out with. I definitely recommend going ahead and practicing with this this layered flower stamp set a bunch of times. Once you get the hang of it, it's easy to line up, it's easy to go ahead and stamp, but it does take some practice. In fact, I had to even stamp a couple flowers kind of off camera before I remembered how these all layered up to create these beautiful flowers. I stamped each layer of my flower twice so that I had a really nice, deep, dark, true, bright, perfect coloring. And I'm only gonna stamp three of them because that's all you need. This stamp is big. But just look at the gorgeous results. I absolutely love this stamp set. It's been a little while since I've used it and I forgot how much I love it. So there's our finished flower and I am going to stamp three large flowers and I think I stamped nine sets of leaves. I'm pretty sure I stamped nine sets of leaves. And when I stamped the leaves, I stamped some in that normal kind of leafy green color, but then I went ahead and stamped some in like more of a teal color. So for the green, I used eucalyptus and seafoam. And then for this kind of unique, almost teal colored leaves, I used Daydream and Hot Tub. And again, just pulling in all of the colors that you saw in our color inspiration for today. The majority of my work on this layout is doing these stamps. Because they are a layered stamp and I was taking my time, once I had all of the stamping and die cutting done, the actual putting together of the layout was like 20 minutes, like so quick. Uh, so the bulk of the work and the bulk of the time that I use to create this layout is in getting these perfectly stamped embellishments. I grabbed the coordinating dies that go with the stamp set and die cut all of the flowers and leaves. And now I'm gonna play with this like old school wood background stamp. This stamp has this fun kind of textured design on it. It looks like burlap. I am using icing on the cake ink, which is a deep dark brown. Now this stamp set never stamps perfectly and that's okay. I don't really need it to stamp perfectly. The other thing is because it's been so long since the last time I used it, this stamp got like dusty so weird because i don't know maybe it's because of the texture on the the stamp set maybe 
I don't know. But anyway, it got this dust on it. And when I added the ink, you know what dust does when you add moisture. Uh, so it was creating all these like funky patterns. <laughs> And you know what? I totally went with it because I thought it was so cool looking. I did try to like um, clean it off. It didn't really work. So <laughs> let your red rubber stamps get dusty every so often. Might be surprised with the results. I I honestly, I mean, I wipe, I I clean my scrapbook room. I don't know what the deal was, but for whatever reason, dust got into those little crevices. And it's a good thing I really only wanted like the outside edges of the stamp because no matter how hard I pressed, it would not stamp the middle part. I don't know, this is a really, really old stamp, you guys. It's super old. Um, but I really just wanted the edges because it does have this really cool, fun pattern that I really do like. And I wanted to incorporate this kind of textural pattern into it because I have uh, that beautiful kind of oatmeal-y sweatery color on the color inspiration piece and I thought that that kind of worked well. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to map my photo with this lovely dark wood grain paper and then I'm going to cut this floral pattern paper into like a hunk. I don't want to say that, I don't know, I don't know how big I made it. Maybe five by six. I just cut something that looked like it would be larger than my matted photo that I could use to layer up behind to the photo for a little extra color and pattern. Next, I'm gonna rough up the edges and then I'm gonna go ahead and ink those roughed up edges with my Distress Oxide Vintage Photo Ink, which is a staple around my craft room and my absolute favorite Distress Oxide color. And it's only my favorite because Tim Holtz has yet to release a good peach. We need a good peach. Campaign for peach. Now we can start to get all these bits and pieces onto my page. I'm going to do a center layout today. So everything is going to be kind of put into the center with this lovely cream color background. This is some speckle tone cardstock from the craft from the scrapbook warehouse. <laughs> And I want to go ahead and kind of offset my photo and then have that gorgeous pattern paper behind it. I'm going to play with this little vellum uh, piece from the Honey and Spice collection. It's actually going to end up going on the other side of my layout when we're all finished here. I'm going to kind of audition these big flowers till I know exactly where I want them to go. And once I have a good idea of where I want things to go, I can then go ahead and start sticking and plunk plunking. So <laughs> I'm gonna place that vellum piece over on the left. I decided I liked that. And then I'm gonna do the three clusters, like a little triangle around my photo. While I adhere all of these pieces down, and get them back into place. Let's talk about the photo. So this photo is of my, some of my ancestors. This is the Furman family. Uh, and I love this picture because it's the mother and father and all five of the kids. And um, just the background, the fact that there's kind of like a little bit of background, you can kind of see where they lived and stuff. I love that. Um, my family, or this is my grandfather's uh, family, and uh, they grew up in uh, Lancaster County, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch. They were Pennsylvania Dutch, <laughs> which I don't know if you know what that is or not, but um, if you're from Pennsylvania, you know uh, what part of the state they lived in and where they were from. Uh, I am very much part of Pennsylvania back my family tree in Pennsylvania goes back to like the 1600s and I've lived here my entire life so yeah uh, 
I really, this is like my home, <laughs> really, for generations. So I'm getting all of these flowers and leaves down into place, and I added a little bit of a channeling spot. I don't have a lot to say about this, just the names of, I have some of the names of the people in the photo and how they're related to me. So just a little bit of an annotation kind of journaling for this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and get all these gorgeous flowers down. Now we did, if you saw our color inspiration, you saw there is the, that tealy color, which I did pull in a little bit with the leaves, but I wanna pull it in a little bit more. And the our color inspiration has like this icy teal in it, which I just thought was so pretty. And so I really wanted to make sure to incorporate that color in among my layout. I am keeping my title really, really simple. And I'm putting it just across the bottom there. And the title is just going to be the Furman family. And then I am going to add some sequins. And that's where I'm going to bring in that icy tealy color. I also added that cute little die cut above my photo. It just says this is us, which I thought really worked well for the photo and what I was documenting uh, for my heritage album. I am using the patina finish sequins from Spiegel Mom Scraps. They were the perfect color to pull in that, that icy teal. And I'm going to dot them all around my layout. And I love how this layout turned out. It turned out so nice. This unexpected color combination was absolutely perfect and awesome to play with. It, I've been doing a ton of fall layouts, so having this kind of really different color combination to play with and kind of go through my stash and, and choose these colors and pull them together uh, was really fun and almost like a palette cleanser. And then I was ready to get back into all of the fall things. And here we are all finished. Be sure to head over and check out Natalie's take on this beautiful color combination and have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. I know you're getting multiple videos today, which is so fun. And I'm so happy to be able to bring them to you and to bring these beautiful projects to you. Have a great day. Bye.